The last words of Emperor Marcus Aurelius, a painting by French artist Eugène de Lacroix, completed in 1844. It depicts the Roman Emperor Marcus Aurelius on his deathbed, surrounded by his family and advisors, as he speaks his final words. According to Roman historian Cassius Dio, the last spoken words of Marcus Aurelius as he lay dying were, go to the rising sun, I am already setting. What did the emperor mean by this? And were these really his last words? Seventeenth of March, 180 AD, the Emperor Marx Aurelius dies. The death of the philosopher king is felt throughout the empire. His son Commodus, age 18, becomes sole ruler, ending the golden age of the empire known as Pax Romana. 190 AD, Commodus kills 100 lions as a display of his demigod abilities. He decapitates a running ostrich with a specialized dart. He now claims to be the next Hercules. Maybe he was. 191 AD. Everyone hates Commodus. That didn't take long. 192 AD. A wrestler kills Commodus in a bath after a failed poison attempt. 1844, Eugène Delacroix paints the famous works, the last words of the emperor, Marcus Aurelius. The painting depicts Marcus Aurelius lying in a grand bed, his head resting on a pillow, clutching his son. His face is pale and his eyes are closed, suggesting that he is near death. Around him, his family and advisors stand or kneel, looking on with expressions of grief and sadness. In the foreground, a group of Roman soldiers pay their respect to the fallen leader. There's not much remarkable about the painting, except the fact that it captures this moment in history where the great Emperor Marcus Aurelius says his final words. The Emperor Marcus Aurelius, known as the philosopher king and the last great emperor of Rome, known for his strong character, for his gratitude of life, for his zest of life. He's known as one of the greatest minds throughout history and he was admired for his character. To first understand the painting and the final words of Emperor Marx Aurelius, we must understand the painter, Eugène Delacroix, born 26th of April, 1798. He is known as the greatest French romantic painter. His use of colour inspired impressionist and post-impressionist artists. He had a profound impact on art itself. Delacroix had a great interest in painting historical moments, great historical moments, and this painting was no exception. This is one of the most important moments in history, the death of Emperor Marx Aurelius. Some would consider the death of Rome. So according to my five minute research on color theory, if you look at some of Delacroix's famous works like The Bark of Dante, Lion Hunt, Christ on the Cross and others, red stands out. Red in art has a great significance. According to color theory and my great expertise on color theory, red can mean anger, love, lust, wealth or even death. So if you were to look around a painting and you look at the colors, it's quite muted tones, it's quite dull, but you'll notice that there is actually a figure in red, bright red. There's two figures in red. If you look at Roman history, the use of red was to connotate wealth, but the man on the end of Aurelius's bed is it's quite a dull red, which was available to the common person. If you look at the man beside him, 18 year old Commodus, his garment is a bright red, this showed wealth. This red came from the crushed, dried remains of a female beetle. It was a very rare color, and you can see his garment looks very suave, very fancy. So to understand a few things about this painting and the significance of the final words of Marcus Aurelius, we also have to understand who Commodus was. If you've watched Gladiator, then you will know that Commodus, played by Joaquin Phoenix, was a spoiled brat he was evil, vindictive, he was egotistical, he was a megalomaniac, he wasn't the best of people, and that's quite accurate. So Commodus had a dislike for his father because of his jealousy. His father, who this great Stoic known for his character and for following virtue, living in accordance with nature, goes completely opposed to Commodus. So Commodus couldn't live up to his father's character and his father's legacy. So instead of following virtue, he went into vice and 
delved into these feelings of grandeur, these delusions of grandeur, I might say. He puts on these great shows at the Colosseum where he slaughtered a hundred lions, or he killed an ostrich with a specialized dart, or he would put people in danger of a panther and he would save their life. He's seen himself as this great hero, but it was only within these controlled environments where he controlled the outcome. So it was all kind of a facade, an image to make himself look good because he believed himself to be this great figure like Hercules, who he believed the strength and brawn, the masculinity of Hercules made him much greater than his father. But as the Stoics say, virtue is the only good. In the meditations, Aurelius actually says, do not get dragged into quail fights and such sports, these barbaric sports. Don't get dragged into them. Just enjoy your own peace of mind. So this was the spoiled brat that was to rule Rome. This person that put on these weird shows, um, these weird events that made him look like the great hero. That was who Marcus Aurelius was putting his power into. So it is believed by the historian Cassius Dio and many historians that this is the moment where Rome died. It is known as the death of the last great emperor. And Cassius Dio is actually quoted saying that Rome went from gold to rust and iron. So what is meant by these last words, go to the rising sun for I am already setting? Historians believed that he was just saying, look towards my son. I'm already dying now. Look towards the new emperor of Rome. Give him the guidance. Donald Robertson has done years and years and years of research on Marcus Aurelius. He's probably read every single piece of literature, every piece of text that is written about Marcus Aurelius. He's done years of research. He understands Marcus Aurelius probably better than anyone alive and probably anyone that was alive at the time of Delacroix. And through his readings, he says that the mind is comparable to the sun and wisdom and virtue is sunlight. So what he is saying by his final words is put faith in wisdom and virtue. So it's kind of a similar message, but he's actually saying, find someone who exudes these characters of wisdom and virtue. He's saying, I am already setting, I am already dying. Find someone that displays wisdom and virtue. We need a new hope for Rome. We need a, a better leader. So in this fact, he didn't have much confidence in Commodus. But what were the actual last words that we have evidence of of Marcus Aurelius. These are the last recorded words of Marcus Aurelius, and I'm gonna read them to you right now. This is like no secret, it's in his book, The Meditations, um, and it's his last um, entry. So this book, The Meditations, was the personal diary of Marcus Aurelius, not meant to be read by anyone. And when he was on his military campaigns, and he was in bed, he had some alone time from his very busy schedule. He would make little notes in his diary about character, how to be a good person. And this was his secret to be such a great character, one of history's greatest figures. So the last paragraph he wrote in this is the key to be a great person, and it's the last thing he ever wrote. So, of March 180 AD, aged 58 in his military quarters in Pannonia, modern day Serbia, Marcus Aurelius lay there dying after a long sickness, and he writes, Mortal man, you have lived as a citizen in this great city. What matter if that life is five or fifty years? The laws of the city apply equally to all. So what is there to fear in your dismissal from the city? This is no tyrant or corrupt judge who dismisses you, but the very same nature that brought you in. It is like the officer who engaged a comic actor dismissing him from the stage. But I have not played my five acts, only three. True, but in life, three acts can be the whole play. Completion is determined by that being who caused first your composition and now your dissolution. You have no part in either causation. Go then in peace. The God who lets you go is at peace with you. So that's the last thing Mox Aurelius ever wrote before he died. And this was him coming to terms with his death. So Aurelius used the metaphor of the stage in his description of life. And in fact, the curtain comes, this is your birth, and the curtain closes, this is your death. You do not decide when the curtain closes. The only thing you decide, and the only thing you have power over, is to play your role in the play. 
So you're given the character of a good person. As Aurelius says, your role is to be a good man. You're given this role and all you can do is play it to your best ability. So you choose to follow a life of virtue, to be a good person, live up to this role, and the curtain closes. You don't try grab the curtain, hang on to it, to stop it from closing because the curtain will close when it closes. The point of this video was the Stoic phrase, memento mori, which means remember death. So memento mori, remember one's death. The Stoics would keep a medallion or a coin, something to remind them of their own fate. I actually have this silver denarius from Marcus Aurelius. So he actually printed this off and someone had this, many people had this and used it as part of their life. But those people died many years ago and I now have this coin. And that is a symbol of death to me. And one day, like these people held this coin and died, I too will hold this coin and then die. So this just reminds me that one day I will die. I also use a calendar like this calendar Every week you fill it in a week of your life. As Seneca says, it is not that life is short, it is that we waste so much of it. So when you use these calendars, you are reminded every single week that a week has passed. It causes a great gratitude for life. It just reminds you that time is limited and we shouldn't waste so much of it doing pointless things. And this is summed up by a quote from the Meditations of Marcus Aurelius. Perfection of character is this, to live each day as if it were your last, without frenzy, without apathy, without pretense. I think this perfectly encapsulates Marcus Aurelius as a character and how we should live our life, is that when we remember death, the profound impact it has on us is to live life in the moment. This is where life exists. It doesn't exist in the past. It doesn't exist in the future. The past is just a memory. And thinking about the past, trying to change the past only causes feelings of regret. It causes depression, it causes feelings of sadness. Focusing on the future causes feelings of anxiety and feelings of worry. But focusing on the present causes feelings of empowerment, feelings of gratitude. It's because this is the only thing we have power over is the present, is over our own choices in the present moment. We don't control these outside forces. So the real last words written by Marcus Aurelius in his personal diary almost 2,000 years ago remind us that we are only mortal, that we are all equal. It doesn't matter if you're a great emperor or if you're one of his subjects. We're all equal. We all face the same ending of death. And our only goal is to be a good person, live life in accordance with nature, to live a life of virtue. Don't give in to vices like Commodus, but follow virtue like Marcus Aurelius. Thank you for watching today's video. I'm making many more like this, so subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss it. If you want to support what I'm doing, then please consider becoming a YouTube member or heading over to my Instagram at The Everyday Stoic where I share much more stoic quotes, stoic teachings, stoic memes, or even Q and A's. And it would be a great help if you considered getting the Memento Mori Life Calendar. The link is in the description. You can get 10% off with Coach Stoic. It's personally helped me live a more full and present and be more grateful for the life that I have. So hopefully it helps you. I know many people that it's helped. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great day.